Hello and welcome to the Daily Mail for Sunday the 6th of August 2023. If you're new to the channel on Sundays, we do a thing called Stat Sunday. Um, basically because Sunday's dead because uh, all the stories come out on Saturday. And um, not really much going on on the Sundays. Um, some, some of the Sunday's papers might have transferred rumours, but generally not much coming in. So, we generally talk about the stats from the game, because why not? But, but we do have one story today before then. This is from SuffolkNews.co.uk. Uh, Mill Manager explains why he started wildcard and game changer Duncan Watford against Middlesbrough. Uh, the former Borough attacker started in the lineup ahead of Tom Bradshaw. Uh, Gary Rout has explained why he opted to start Duncan Watmore in the 1 0 win over Middlesbrough. Uh, the 29 year old lined up alongside Zion Fleming and Kevin Nisbet in the Millwall attack on what was his first visit back to Riverside Stadium since leaving Teesside in January. Uh, Watmore delivered another impressive performance as he built on his strong pre season showing. But Rout revealed the wild card may not have uh, even received the nod if not for Tom Bradshaw's illness in the run up. Pain. He said, I probably would have started Bradshaw if it had been bad all week. He was here all Tuesday, missed most of the week. And he was talking about our top scorer last season with 17 goals. I think we've got very good options. I certainly think Duncan finished the season really, really well. He's taken into pre season. He's a bit of a game changer when he gets on form and builds that rhythm. He's one where you almost play him as a bit of a wild card because he has the ability to change games. The Lions boss also shared theory on why he thinks Fleming's performances will improve as he reflected on his range of attacking options. Rowett added, We know how good Zorn Fleming is. I don't think Zor is completely fit. I think there's different things in pre-season that made it difficult for him to be his best. But I think he'll get better and better now. Nizzy, Nizzy's a goal scorer. He's always looking for that little run in the last man. He saw that with that 1v1 and the chance just before that. He pulls away from defenders into the little spaces. I actually think normally he'd probably finish both of those because he's a deadly finisher. I'm really pleased with uh, that front three, and I think it's important when you play that way that an extra defender they give forwards give you that threat on the turnover, and I thought they did that really, really well. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty obvious why, like you're saying that Tom Brasher and Neil is playing Duncan Watmore against his former team. We've seen that over and over again. When players go back to their former clubs, they turn it on in style, and Duncan Wall did yesterday. Um, but he did have a funny moment when he was substituted. Now, if you've seen it yet, let's take a look at it. This is a video from Neil's Twitter. If we can play it, will it play again? Oh dear. There go. Really appreciate the work he did here on side and deservedly so, and he... <laughs> As he comes off the pitch, he actually accidentally went to the Middlesbrough dugout. <laughs> and it has to embarrassingly put his head down and <laughs> head to the wrong bench. He forgot he was he had to go to the away team bench now. So that was funny. Um yeah, so that's it. Now we're gonna move on to the stats now. Uh, a bit of a change this season because the um the websites they used to use last season, they've basically just given up. Um, one of them's just stopped posting and the other's actually closed down. So we are now using fbref.com to get the stats from Opta to get the XG because I know you, you all want to know what the XG was. Uh, the XG was 0.7 to Middlesbrough and 1.2 to Millwall. So there you go. And the actual score was 1-0. This is how we lined up, apparently, that's how they lined up. Here's all the match events, uh, substitutions, goals, and yellow cards. This, uh, this thing is full of numbers, it's completely full of numbers. Um, obviously they had most of the possession, 68 to 32. Uh, passing accuracy 85 to 69. They had much more passes. Uh, 788 passes they had. We had only 375. 
but it's what you do with it, isn't it? So shots on target, 13% for them, 17% for us. Um, saves, uh, two of two, one of two. And there is so many numbers around, it's kind of confusing. So, what this website does is it has the individual player stats in terms of expected goals. And we can see, uh, if we go down here, if you look here, expected goals by player. So expected goals, 0 0.6 for Kevin Nisbet, 0 0.2 for Zion Fleming, and 0 0.2 for Joe Bryant. Um, SCA, shot creating action. So um, they have them split into one and two. Or well, they have uh, shot creating actions, goal creating actions. Uh, so basically, who's setting 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 the plays up? Uh, you got Joe Bryan with six. You got Duncan Watmore with four. So they were prolific. But then you've got Adomi Mako with two and two. Obviously, he created that goal. And what they do there is they include. So he skinned the guy down the line. He knocked it past him, run down. That's one shot creating action. Then he crossed it in. That's another one. So he's got two. So where it says GCA goal creating action, that's what he did. He but it's basically an assist and a pre-assist, if you understand. So he did the pre-assist himself and the assist for the Romain essay. We look onto the passes uh, over here. You can see again Billy Mitchell standing out. 48 passes attempted, 40 completed. Um, very nice. Uh, Murray Wallace 29 and five. Uh, Jake Cooper 26 and 19. Very high accuracy. I'm guessing because there's three of, them, three of them at the back now, they can play it between themselves. Uh, they can play with themselves. Uh, carries, basically, who's getting on the ball the most. And again, Big Mitchell. Uh, Duncan Watmore. Um, Danny McNamara. Um, PRGC. Progressive carries. Carries that move the ball forward towards the opponent's goal line at least 10 yards from its furthest point. In the last six passes, you get that? No, nope, me neither. Or any carry into the penalty area excludes carries which end in defending 50% of the pitch. Okay, whatever that means, but you can see here. So who's topping in that is Joe Bryan and Dan McNamara, Duncan Watmore. So it's basically who's the attacking threat in that game? Those were the players. Uh, Take-ons who you know, dribbling at someone and trying to get past them. So attempts and successes, and again, Duncan Watmore, 4 and 2, Ado Macu, 2 and 2, so 100% for them. Uh, Joe Bryan, 2 and 1. So there you go. This website is so insanely stats based that if you look at their age, not only does it give you their year, but how old they are in years, it gives you the day as well. Can you believe this? So we've got Tom Bradshaw, is 31 years old and 9 days. Yes, really. That's insane, but uh, there you go. Uh, we know that Romain Essie is 18 years old and 84 days. So there you go. Not only that, but we have extra uh, goalkeeping stats. So how is good is this goalkeeper? Uh, shots on target against two. Saves, two. It's not bad. Uh, PSXG, post-shot expected goals. So how good were those chances against him? Uh, that he he made two saves from 0 0.6, so he saved 0 0.6 of a goal. You understand? Uh, hopefully, as the season goes on, this gets gets a bit clearer. I just literally just found this website, and I'm just literally going through it right now with you. Uh, this is the first time I'm really looking at it. Uh, the you can see launched so long. They don't call them long balls here. They call them launched balls. Uh, the goalkeepers launched the ball 30 times. Only six were completed. Well, that's not very good. Uh, but it was a bit windy, wasn't it? And a bit rainy, so we'll hold fire on that one. Uh, passes. Um, not including goal ticks, 19. Throws, he threw it three times. Average length, 45 yards. But goal kicks from, from the spot, uh, 20 of those. 95% uh, of them were launched, as in long balls, an average length of 62 yards. So 
the mill forwards. Someone tell them that's it. That's where it goes. It goes about 62 yards, and get them to measure it out and get in the right places to put, get on that. Um, crosses. So, how many crosses? Uh, the opponents attempted crosses into the peri penalty area. Middles ref crossing the ball in. 16. How many times did this goalkeeper intercept? So, did he come and get the crosses? Which is a big thing. So, they're measuring like the things that goalkeepers are expected to do. And, and one of the things is they have to come for the crosses, like corner kicks and stuff. Two times he did. So, 16 crosses from Middles ref came and got it twice. Um, or well, they were successfully stopped. So. Uh, but you, that's the thing, you don't want a goalkeeper to come and, and miss it and mess it up. So, And sweeper, did it, uh, number of actions outside the penalty area, zero. That, that's good. We'll, we'll, um, that's how I want my keeper, I want him to save shots. The average distance from the goal line in yards, 9.7. So basically 10, he's 10 yards out from the goal line, averagely. When he's doing his work, so is he? How far is he? One of those who comes out ten yards he comes out. Uh, we have now a list of shots, and it goes. It gives you the xG by shot, so you can see here who had the best chance. Well, it wasn't uh, Romain Essay. It was actually Kevin Nisbet. Um, I think just before them. Uh, which one? This one. I'm guessing that that was the one on one. Uh, that uh, we've just heard Gary out talking about 0.42 and 0.55, and it was saved, and it was with his right foot. So there you go. Look how much information we're getting. So here we go with the SCA. So SCA shot creating action one, shot creating action two. So basically, one is the assist, and two is the pre-assist. So we have for that shot from Kevin Nisbet. Uh, this one we've got Billy Mitchell passing it to Duncan Watmore who passes it to Kevin Nisbet who shoots. You understand? And then as you can see here with the goal, we've got Adomu Umaku taking on, as in dribbling past the player. He passes it into Romain Esse who scores. And that was a 0.1 xG uh, after the sh after he shot. So where he was in the position on on the uh, uh, in the goal area. That, that was a 0.1. As, as soon as he shot it, based on where the players were, like the goalkeeper and stuff, that was 0.73. I don't know why, but that's what they're telling me. Um, and it was apparently 13 yards out from the goal. So there you go. Look how much information we are getting here. That was with his left foot. Um, beautiful stuff we got here. Beautiful stuff. So if you want to know how many headers on goal did Jake Cooper have, he had one. Just that one there on 50 minutes. That was a 0 0.07 and that was off target. Oh yeah, so that's the XG. You get the XG, but if you kick it off target, it's obviously not an, a proper XG. Which is why I think some websites say XG is one thing, XG is another thing. They give different XGs. So uh, Cooper's one, 0 0.07, but it was off target. So then after he headed it, the XG is there is none because it wasn't on goal. So the only the only um the only shots that were on target, it looks like, is this one, Marcus Force that was saved, Kevin Nisbet that was saved, Morgan Rogers that was saved, Romain Essay that was a goal. So these are the only ones that had to be saved, otherwise they would have went in. You understand? <laughs> So that's it. So you can see in that second half, Minders were having quite a few shots. They were getting quite involved, and then we go, okay, you want to come at us? We'll bring on the talent. We'll bring on the talent, as was as uh, as it Nick said on the uh, Acting Mill podcast. Let's bring on the talent. Yes, and what talent it is. So there you go. Um, so yeah, lots of information there. Is that it? Yeah, so that's it. A lot to pick through. I'm sure we, as we go through the season, we can look at the, the matches and see um, patterns and things that happen. 
and pick out people who deserve to be picked out and praised. So yes, very good stuff there. But we still do have whoscored.com, so let's go to that. Um, here we go. And they had so they take that information that we've just saw and they give a rating. Um, so that's what we're here for. Uh, this is the match report. No strengths from him as well. Um, Millwall created a high number of chances relative to their possession, but uh, had a high shot frequency when in possession. Uh, as we've seen, 16 to 12 attempts on goal, 14 to 7 open play, 2 to 3 set piece, 0 to 2 counter attack. And that means that with our 12 shots and our 1 goal, that's an 8% conversion rate. This is where the teams attacked down. Most for us, it's mostly down the right hand side. For them, it's down both wings, shot directions, shot zones, action zones, and player positions. Very compact for me all. High line, quite a high line. Um, looking at Middlesbrough, that's a bit weird. Basically playing 3-4-3-3-4. Very weird. Hmm. Hmm. Not really playing with a right back. The right back's pushed all the way up. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So there's the average position. You can see their goalkeeper as well, way out of his line. Uh, unlike the middle one, who stays on his line and makes the saves. Fantastic stuff. As you can see, you've probably already seen on the right hand side. Top five rated players are all Millwall players. Yes, indeed. Now, let's have a look and go through that now. So the man of the match, Sean Hutchinson with 8.4. Uh, head and shoulders above everyone else um, on the pitch. The next rated player looks to be uh, Romain Essay and Billy Mitchell. Not bad, not bad. So, uh, let's go up here. So, the average player rating for each team was 6.43 for a minute. So, if you look at the club badges, you can see that at the top left and the top right. And the average player rating for Millwall was 6.84. At this level, that's a significant difference of that 0.4. And that's quite large. It's not, uh, that is quite a significant difference. Um, here are the match events we've already seen. Um, so, there you go. 29,359 crowd. Uh, so let's have a look and see who did what. So uh, there are your ratings. We look at the total shots. So who had these 16 and 12 shots? So there you go. Uh, Kevin is with freeze. I'm throwing with two. What more with two? Brian with two. SA two. Uh, possession wise, 68 to 32. And for us, the one mostly on the ball was again Billy Mitchell with 4.2% of the match time in his uh, his possession. Uh, pass success percentage 87 to 70. Obviously, you got the Duncan Watmore going forward, trying to make things happen. Obviously, not going to be uh, having to be a bit more freer and, and carefree. And he's got 54%. Uh, pass conversion rate, whereas the players who's, who are feeding everyone else, uh, Wallace with 89, Mitchell with 85. So there you go. Uh, dribbles 11 to 7. Okay. Aerials 1, 17 to 14. So Fleming with 3, Aerials 1, Cooper with 3. If we click to tackles, though, this is uh, insane. Obviously, but we had to do more tackling because they had the larger percentage of possession of the ball. So we have to tackle them to get the ball. But 8 to 27, that's kind of insane ratio there. Uh, Hutch with 9 of those. That's why he's probably got man of the match there. Or the highest rating on this website. But then, look, SA with 4. Savile with 4. 3. 
Is it SA? When did he come on? Like 69 minutes? No, 71 or something like that. He, he's, he's had a lot less time on the pitch than the rest of these players. He's got four tackles. He's the second highest tackler for Millwall. So he scores and he tackles. Corners, 12 to 6. Um, I believe these are the players who won the corners. Uh huh. Dispossessed, so these players had the ball taken off of them. And of course, with them having the playing the possession game, we have to take the ball off them. They had the they got dispossessed seventeen times, and these are the players who got dispossessed. So there you go. Um, moving on now to um this, which is a Sim is similar but a bit more. We go down and we look at the Millwall players and we we can sort them by rating. So there you go. We've got Sean Hutchinson eight point four one. Then we've got Billy Mitchell seven point three eight. Romain SA seven point three five. He came onto the pitch on the seventy second minute. He's the third highest rated player. Then you've got the goalkeeper seven point one six with those two saves that he made as we mentioned. Then Edomu Maku. Again, coming on as a sub on the 72nd minute, got a 7 with that assist. Um, and that's it for 7s, sevens, 7s sevens and 8s. Everyone else is high, high 6s. Uh, we, did we have any low ball players? Kevin Nisbet. Um, obviously, for him having so many shots, he had 3 shots, 1 on target. Um, not not uh, scoring with that. That's, I think that's what's bumped his score down. Uh, and plus getting a yellow card, probably. Um, but other than that, that's it. Um, everyone else is mid, mid sixes and up. Except for obviously the one, the two players who came right in the end about eight minutes ago. But again, these last minute substitutions, even now they're going to add on 10 minutes, 15 minutes of injury time. They, that's kind of an important role if you come on the 8th, 9th minute. In the 90th minute, you've still got to put a shift in. It's not like it was like um, graveyard time, like just pissing around for like 30 seconds. You've got like 10 minutes to play. So you need to get into the game properly as well. You can't just come in and piss around. Uh, so if we go here, so touches the ball. Odomi and Maku had seven touches of the ball. And he got that assist, that wonderful assist for that goal. And he only had seven touches of the ball. Uh, who had the most touches? Sean Hutchinson, 66. Billy Mitchell, Joe Bryan, Danny McNamara, Casper Denor. He was only on the pitch for 63 minutes, but he had the fifth most touches. So there you go. Um, what shall we look at now? So, yeah, how many of our shots were actually on target? Well, we've just seen from the previous one. Um, it was just the two. Um, but we had, what is it, 12. So we had 12 shots, two on target, one from Kevin Nisbet and one from Romain Essay. So that's not bad. Uh, well, we should have had more on target. You can't have, it's generally, if you haven't seen the previous videos before, if you have 12 shots, you have, should have around five or six on target, and then you should have one or two goals. It halves itself each time. So we got very lucky here that we we had a high number of shots, 12. We only had two on target, and then of that, 50% of those went in. So that's good. Um, it's also lucky we managed to keep that clean sheet. Because if we didn't keep a clean sheet in this game, with that ratio, you, you're not going to be winning games with 12 to 1. Um, so yeah, not very clinical. Is why probably Kevin Nisbet got the low score that he got. Um, but there you go. What shall we look at now? Let's um offsides. Was anyone offsides? Kevin is it once. Um unscheduled touches, that's basically poor ball control. That's not that's not bad. Um defensive stuff. Who did the defensive stuff? Well, here we go. We know about Sean Hutchin and his his tackles, so let's have a look at the numbers. So Hutch nine tackles three interceptions four clearances one block shot so he had the most tackles and the most clearances wow and then we have obviously Romain in second for tackles despite coming on the 72nd minute 
He's the second in tackles for Millwall. Uh, in terms of interceptions, we've got Billy Mitchell up there. Obviously, intercepting higher up the pitch, which is good. You don't, you don't want it. Be doing all that stuff on your own area. And then we've got Hutch second in, in second place. The most clearances was again Hutch with four. Then Casper Denor with three. Uh, Jake Cooper with three. Not bad. Block shots. So these are all the. Sh so they had, they had 16 shots. Four of them were blocked and two were saved by the keeper. So it was three, four. Five, six, seven. So that leaves uh, what nine shots that they had that were went off target. So we did get a bit lucky with them shooting off target all the time. Um, so yeah, Jay Cooper there with a the block shot. So it's a, very much a team effort. You got Hutch being doing the most tackles and clearances. You got Billy Mitchell with the most interceptions, and you got Jay Cooper with the most block shots. It's all very much connected. Defending as a team, so to say. Uh, passing wise, we've already seen bits and pieces of this. Uh, so, as mentioned before, this is a bit easier to read than the last website, but it's kind of less information. But that's how, that's how it works, isn't it? That's why it's easier to read. Uh, the most passes for Mill, Billy Mitchell. You can see his passing accuracy off the chart. Uh, again, Murray Wallace with high pass accuracy because he's. Uh, He's playing in a free now. He's got someone immediately to pass to. Um, he's got, or well, he's got two people to pass to. He's got Joe Bryant who's left, and probably with Jay Cooper to his right, and uh, Billy Mitchell inside as well. So, plenty of options now to get those little triangles going. Um, crosses and accurate crosses. Joe Bryant six and two, Hutch two and one. So. Uh, long balls and accurate long balls. So the goalkeeper 33 and 8. So long balls or launch ball. Long balls. Uh, Hutch 10 and 5. Casper Nor 8 and 5. Jay Cooper 8 and 4. Danny McNamara 5 and 1. What more 5 and 1. Billy Mitchell 4 and 2. Murray Wallace 3 and 3. So there you go with that. So yeah. Um, picking through the bones, it was a fantastic result. But I mean, if. If Middlesbrough could actually shoot on target, that might have been a bit worse for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, how the talent, the talent of Romain Essay coming off of the bench and uh, Edomo Maku. Uh, but Romain Essay with two shots, one goal, um, and second in the most tackles for Millwall players. What more could you ask for? Uh, and three points for me all. So there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.